scared of dentists and the dark. I was scared of pretty girls and starting conversations. All my friends are turning green. Yeah, the magician's assistant in their dream. Oh. So, this wee game, I've got a few different games within this, so excuse the mess. 
This game here would, would basically call tidying up the house and I'm gonna make Paddy to look after this one for me. So if you look at the, the combs, so the combs up like this, it's a wee bit like a, a cup. And when you look at it this way, it's a bit like a saucer. So we're gonna have a we're gonna have a competition and we're gonna see at the end who's got the most cups and who's got the most saucers. So do you, do you want to be cups or do you want to be saucers? Your team? Uh something. This team is going to be the saucers. And Paul, your team is going to be the cops, mate. Eh? Alright, so you're up a right way. I'm going to turn the team's team's down this way. Sorry. <laughs> roll on, roll on, roll off subs. Roll on, roll off subs. <laughs> so, we'll do this for 30 seconds. And the idea here is, let's get them used to bed now for a dip, but also coordination. Um, we would do this maybe two, three times. The first time to get them warmed up, we would say that Paddy's house is a mess and that Paddy's trying to fix it and the kids are all trying to turn them around. So Paddy's trying to get them around the right way and the kids are all trying to turn them down and they're racking his house and he's running about cracking up because his house is getting racked. Um, but we then change it to the wee game we're doing now. What are they? We're going to do see our next game. You're ahead of the game. Next game we're going to be doing that one. And then our, our third one would basically be we'll be asked them just to use one hand. Folks even be talking about the non-dominant hand. Just to get them used to one hand. A hand that maybe they're just not just as familiar at that age group but I get getting the motion. So we'll give you 30 seconds. Up, sauces, please go. Almost together. Oh, you scared? Yeah, yeah. You're flipping. Oh my god, you're quick. I'm not going to count them off. He's following her. Wait, which one? Where am I going? Ah, you forgot. You're upside down. You're upside down. You're upside down. Okay, we'll call it there. Who's ragging? Oh, he's just team. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, who? Well done. So, look, give, give us just a wee taste there and again. Rather than go through those three different drills, I just want, just want to show you everything. Next thing you want in this station would be what time is it, Mr. Wolf? I'm not sure if Danny has gone to school yet. We've gone to school yet. We'll take some energy, just give us. We'll take a same part. off as the as the word and basically the coach will we'll start off just with basically chasing his back so i'm gonna i'm gonna you're gonna shoot what time is it mr Wood. whatever time i shoot that's the amount of steps for me to take so again what time is it mr Wood? i shoot at a time we'll keep doing that until i come if they're close enough to me and at that point i shoot at center time and i turn around and i run and i try and tap you then and catch it that time the wolf beat you know. um Start off doing it just by walking out, and again, you're running back, it's a wee bit of twice, you're running back. Then we up it to, right, every time you come out, you're bouncing the ball, you're getting the bounces in. When you're getting a wee bit older, then it could be the solo one. So every time you take one, two, three of the solo, and on the way back in, then you can take your solo with your bounce as well. So we'll start off a wee one, so if you all shout out, what time's it, Mr. Wood? What time's it, Mr. Wood? Three o'clock, three o'clock. Two o'clock, five o'clock. Dog clock, two o'clock. Ian, so. What time is it, Mr. Wood? They're hits! Okay. Well, a few of the kids actually try to take chunks out, so we'll just keep a wee eye on the Hannibal Ackers. Um, so we'll go again, and this time if everyone's got a wee ball. Paul, if you want to sit out with your engine, mate, that's all right. You all right? Do you feel up to it? Do you feel up to it? Great, that's happy. And also, this time when you take your steps, get your bounce at the end of it. And we'll not do the last one, but if you think when we're getting up around the, the under six, under seven teams, then it can be a solo. And if you're looking a wee bit of differentiation again there, lads, so you're under sevens, you'll be saying, look, let, let's try a solo with the left foot and the right foot every other time. So, what time is it, Mr. Wood? Come up. What time is what it, Mr. Wood? Two o'clock, door clock. What, what time, time is it, Mr. Wood? Share cloak, six o'clock. What time is it, Mr. Wood? Better hurt. <laughs> the weak one, the weak one to pray, the weak one to pray. Okay, you just get, you just set the balls down. If you set the balls down, so the next one we do would basically be a bit like musical chairs. So I'm not going to ask you to dance again. Dance if you want, on that's funny. Okay, you could, you could dance. So what I ask the kids just for the crack that would be running around and have wee music on, they'd be dancing around this wee squared zone. And instead of when you stop the music, everyone goes and finds a chair, the coach will call out a command and you see what kids are the first one to carry out that command. So 
that's the reason for the hurdles, and that's the reasons for, for, for having footballs and, and different wee bits of equipment there too. Because it, the coach may shoot something like the first person to jump over all hurdles, and again you're getting in another fundamental movement skill there with the jumping. You might shoot the first person to hop over three cones. You might shoot for your coordination the first person to touch three orange cones with their left hand. So it can be as general as you want. I'll go through a few just to give you a taste there. You can dance, you can walk, you can hop with your paw up to you. Um, I normally have a wee speaker with me, but your favourite station, Aifa. So in this station, we'll focus on evasion. Three or four, you just want to jump in for a wee bit of evasion. I know you're in already. Yeah, boys, go on ahead. Go on ahead. So, this one for a wee bit of crack. Danny normally chases the kids when I'm up with Joe Carr, so you're trying to be the last one in. If Danny hits you with, and you're out, and he's running around, he's trying to catch you, and he's running around as fast as he's running around, and 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 you get a point. If you jump inside a hoop, you get a point. If you jump over a hurdle, you get a point. But if you get hit by the remote control car while you're doing it, you're back to zero. What, so if, you, what if you get more than 10 points? Stop at 10, you're the winner, and then everyone gets a breather. Because we'll have a few, a few, wee, a few wee stroke, people struggle on the sailing. So well, I just have a go at that dart first at 10, we just go. <laughs> if you hit by a remote control car, you're back to zero. He fine coming for you. <laughs> Just be the wee tags, so the, the tags are the belts. And look, I can just always like, set them up even if even if you just want to get the start off like you just want to put one on you. Up there against that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna bring it up. Bring it up together. You can tuck them in your shorts as well. Yeah. Daddy, even though you're my father, I'm gonna bring you down. <laughs> Or, or if you don't have them, you can use socks or whatever, you know. If you don't have the tags, you can use socks or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll start at different levels this. Um, starting off with these, we're going to get in headers or go on But we'd usually start off with just Danny or maybe a parent or two chasing the kids. Give them a wee idea of just evasion and having only maybe one or two opponents chasing them. Once I've got comfortable with that, I'll then have maybe half the kids with tags on, half without. Half, we have, and you're then progressing to the stage we are now where you're trying to go for an opponent's tag while you're also protecting your own. So you're trying to keep it arm's length. Just like a match too where you're, you're trying to protect the ball from the opponent but also trying to think about where your next group is and where your own, your own teammates are. So hopefully the progression is clear. I'm not going to go through every stage as I said there's so much stuff I want to get through this morning but there, there are other thought processes behind it. Okay? It's that important, it's that important. I just say. Okay, we'll move, move through this wee zone here then. I know it's quite a common one, but rather than get a, a load of bibs out in that there, um, I'm just trying to we'll show our, our, our amazing helper here. So Aoife would be your, your shark for talk. See, there's different elements to this wee game. 
you can have Aoife and her teammates on this side. So if, if you're on this side of the pool, you would have all the kids lined up as fishes to begin with. And one or two parents starting here and they're trying to get the other side. Ready? Trying to get the other side. Go. Okay. Excellent. And trying to get them, trying to get as many men across as possible. When you pull the kids' tail off, then they become sharks too until we're down to the last few. Megan will do that for yeah. talk's sake. It, it's totally it's totally up to yourself it's and your okay. own age group. So yeah. for the fundamentals, I mean I think that you need a lot of verbal cues. Yeah. For the under sevens are probably one. I don't I don't know if they'd respond yet just as well. Yeah. The under sevens, I mean you may use something different than, than sharks and fishes that's a wee bit more appropriate to them, you know. Sim as simple as, that's a some Braves player, that's a some Pauls player. You pull that, that's them out of the game, you're getting the score. Um, the, the next step, you know, certain question there if you want it. The next one basically would be with no escape area. So when Aoife got the other side there, that was her. She was safe, but maybe count a few seconds and they're back in the game. So you would just use the entire grid for the entirety of the session. So there, there's nowhere to escape really. So like, 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 this is something like the sea, and maybe exactly. when you're on the other side of the pool, it's like the bay. That's the beach. That's the sand. And can a fish stay out in the beach? Uh, no, definitely not. Definitely we could be turtles instead. Well, we're going to be fishes, alright, you? <laughs> so, that's again, as you're progressing, we're again, you're hoping later down the line that the sharks are thinking about hunting and packs, working as a team. So, as opposed to everyone going one on one, maybe working in twos and threes and no one. Look, if we get them close to the end here, they're going to be rounded out over, just like the side lane, the pits are going to be out over the end lane. Trying to get as early as possible those wee thought processes there. And by the time they're moving up here on their nines and elevens, they know these wee things without knowing where they've actually come, come to mind before. And the last, wee, last wee one would be in this zone where. Half a kid, so it's near 50 50. Half a kid would have bibs and half wouldn't, and it's really chaotic. Keep them all in the way, which makes that a wee bit trickier. Then we're going to go a wee bit at high will initially start your dipping. So, just give me six people, and if there's six, you get that ball, get the ball, any, any, any six balls from that. That's what we're going to do now. What do you see? You get a wee ball. You get a ball made of a safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just come on in again, lad. So for this one, for the initial start of the dip, you're gonna work as an individual and you're gonna roll the ball underneath and then you're gonna pick it up. Obviously, if you were doing this here with, with a group who was trying to work on your, your toe under, maybe when you're moving as far as your, your sixes and your sevens, then you're gonna be encouraging that with a right foot and a left foot of dip. So if you just all wanna go. The first person to roll, you're going to roll five balls underneath and dip them up again. Okay, way we go. And try and really emphasize that they're getting the back, stay in the back and dip the ball under. Okay, stay in the back, dip the ball under. I'm trying to get around as many different hurdles as possible. I'm just following you with. Hurry up. <laughs> super, super. I'm a call there. I'm a call there. Turn it. So, straight away there, it encourages the, the back being bad. You see these players trying to dip from here, so they have to be in the back, just roll the ball even. You have other players there sometimes, we have some kids that are trying to sort of throw the ball there. So it's a good opportunity for them to work on that under, underarm roll. It all ties in the hand pass, believe it or not. Even just rolling the ball, it all ties in that same movement. So rolling the ball underneath, grabbing. This time I want you just working on twos with one ball. So if you, if you set a ball down and just work on twos. Here you go, my son, my Paul. And this time, in your pairs, one partner, if you do this one, me just to show everyone. So Aoife's gonna roll the ball under under the hurdle. I'm gonna pick it up, then Aoife's gonna come with me. I'm gonna roll it under for Aoife. Aoife's gonna pick it up, and we're gonna do that in every hurdle. So the winning pair is gonna be. No, you're okay. The winning pair will be the first pair to roll it under every one of the hurdles. Okay, Aoife? Yeah, Paul wants a slow cup. Ready? Steady, let's go. Take a whistle. <laughs> Everybody's been here.
<laughs> and then the last thing one would be another be a vision game just in this zone. Where and I must stress this here. It's a bit like ball tag only only with a beanbag and you're trying to hit their feet. You don't want a few people getting hit up the face in that there, which we've already seen a few weeks ago already. Yeah. Um so if possible, start off again, maybe one coach, one parent, going for the kids' feet. As they get a wee bit familiar with it, a wee bit comfortable with it. Give it another few bean bags. So, like, as he is the part, he has to throw it under and he has to try to get the fish. No, we're not going to use the hooks anymore. Oh. So just anywhere you want, you can run, you can jump over them if you want to. That's the action you do. Kids should always have a chance to score. Um, it's one of the big things in their list when, when they come this action. Did I get a chance to score? So always have at least one station where they can score goals or points or scores of some sort. So Pia, see, that's what we'll have here. We'll have kids lined up. With a number of parents in the net, get the balls back out them as quick as they could. And the way we sort of tailor it is, once they get a shot off, they take a wee step back. So, trying to get them to find their range where they're, where they're going to score from. So, it's, so like... You're going to go for a goalie. You're going to go for the goal every time, okay? And initially, your kick will start with kick off the ground. As they get a wee bit more comfortable with that, you'll be talking about a bounce kick. So, them bouncing down and then kicking through. Until eventually they're dropping the ball with both hands and getting a, 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 you know, a kick out of, out of both hands. When we're moving up there six and seven, even at that age, I'd be looking them to be going with the right arm and with the left. Um, something that we use with my own son in a game with our own group, as opposed to using terms that you're, you're not a dominant foot, you're a foot that's with a hand that you don't leg like with and think you can hurt. He wants you to establish what that foot is. So like, hey, you know, just ask him, like, what, what foot do you prefer to kicking with? I call the other foot their short foot foot and it seems to stick a lot better so with my own son there, Paul probably back me up on this one um, he, I would just talk about his short foot foot so I'd say to him, mommy you're trying to go over your short foot foot let me see your kicks for your short foot foot and, and straight away that stuck, I mean he, he he's known that term, that's saying he can kick from it from he's been three but he's known what foot's his short foot foot and for me straight away it takes away any stigma of you know I can't rate with this hand or it's harder for me to do things if you call the thing hopefully that they love, their, their club name, is something that sticks well. So yes, Michael? See, see for the wee fundamentals, yes. would I be looking to do this type of kicking drill yes. with them, even? So what's the purpose of the four phones then? And it'll be the, that's the differentiation right. then. So that'll be the, that'll be a stepped up again. Right, okay. So, this so is that's a, not a goal in the, that's not five separate goals? No, no, that, that was your base saying they're just scoring in the net. Right, so okay, your, yeah. your next step then, Michael, when they're, when they're up a wee bit, that's your targets. So it then becomes target practice. Okay, so so suppose you're trying to score anywhere in the net, yeah. you would have the cones. Okay. Um, and when you have the cones there, if you fail for talk's sake at your six and sevens that they're, you, the wee group are going quite well, I would maybe ask them to work on twos on one of the partners, have to protect this cone, where the opposite one has a cone in front of them. So if Ethan for talk's sake was at this cone, if Ethan was there and Ethan had her ball, the main Aoife are trying to hit each other's cone at the same time. So we're trying to protect our cone. But when I'm shooting in, she's trying to get her shot off. When I'm getting my ball, and then you're running and getting your ball back. And we're going again, okay? Yay! We're trying to kick it down, okay? So just make it, I won't go down, it's a wee bit confusing to me. I'm trying to just show as much progression within the stages because you have, you have four different age groups. So that would basically be your, your next, yes, your next step up then, as opposed to having this massive goal yeah. to score into, that you're trying to aim and, and, and go ahead. So for me, the basic level then, I could be taking the points out then, really. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So I wouldn't be having the points on the line. Absolutely. Just the parents, a line of kids here and a line of parents on the goal line. Get, getting the ball out. Yeah, okay. And okay. You, but you could, you could even say for talks, you make a minute into it, just to freshen up, you could say, we're going to put three cones in here. If any has hit the cone too at the same time, you're getting a bonus point or you'll get a big massive hat, you get a high 10 or yeah. something, just to, just to make it a wee bit. Sticker. Sticker. A sticker, yeah, perfect. Sticker. Just to fresh it up because I think at that wee age group, a load of us, it seems like no time whatsoever. It's even five minutes at a station for, yeah. for a kid who's three and four years of age. Their wee attention's gone. And, yeah. and that's why even where fags are, with a minimum of six stations, usually seven, and I'm going to show you at the end, um, we would have basically station breakers, so that you're not just monotonously going from station to station, that they're broken up every station or two. Um, they get everyone coming in and moving away from them. At times it can just become 
a bit of a conveyor belt, just going from one. Yeah, and then the other. So it just, it just breaks breaks it up a wee bit for that age group. Because I say the wee mains are just everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And then obviously moving on to the the points too, in, in that scenario. And then the next wee game we would do would just be over the river, which I'm sure most of you would be familiar with. We would have parents in this day, and then the kids in this day. And parents kicking the ball this side of the river, kids trying to kick them back. And at the end of the second, you make you make run up to 30 seconds. By the end of it, you're, you're seeing where most balls are. As you're, you're, you're asking for the ending up, you may turn around and say, Look, I want you all kicking the ball over the river out of your hands. You may turn around and say, I want you kicking the ball over the river with your sorcery's foot. I want you all hand passing over the river. Depending on your group and what your focus is for that particular week, swap and change it about. You can actually do three of them within the, the one the one step. I mean, you go three one minutes each. The first one kicking on the ground, the next one kicking out of the foot, the next one hand passing. So you you use whatever suits your size on that on that particular week. Happy enough for this week, Sean? Yeah. yeah. Super. Move on to station six. You all found here. So at station six, um, teams, teams and me. Um, it can be, it can, I don't know how, I'm not trying to be polite when I'm saying this here. There can be a lot of kids lost out when they're when they're working on wee games and game scenarios. Where basically if maybe 6v6 or a 7v7 and there maybe two, three kids dominating the whole play. And a lot of the other kids sort of lost or, or chatting or whatever. And I think it's important that kids from the earliest ages, and some may feel comfortable doing it, have opportunities to challenge for the ball um, right from the early days. Now, a lot of times they will end up in a rugby scrum, um, a lot of times they'll end up in a wrestling match, but I think even from the earliest point, they should be given an opportunity to, to challenge for the ball. And, and that's what we do here. Um, basically, I, would, I, would, I run things just called duels or trios. And the part there would basically throw the ball in between two, and our, our initial one would be whoever gets the ball, you don't tackle them. So whoever is ball on chase, you stop and you give it back to them. And that, and that sort of wipes out the point, the, the rugby tackles and the, and the headlocks and everything else. So who's first two up? Who's in a Maifa? Even who do you want to challenge? Your daddy or someone you think you injured, man? All right, free, free floor, ready, ready to rock? Ready, so you're going to have a free floor. And Give them an array, a variety of balls to challenge for. Sometimes high, sometimes roll on the ground, sometimes behind you. If you feel that one person's dominating, again, as best you can, try and throw away, you know, I'd probably have to get free stores maybe easier. <laughs> <laughs> Only here while you're agony. Yeah, ready. And sometimes the kids would say things like, Jumpy the bouncer has has a giraffe, it has a mountain. We think that we'll throw it under the water, just different wee things to get their attention as we're going. Okay, so free store has it eight. Hey, Star has it. So no tagger. No tagger. To start the first one, no tagger. And Creasor gives me a ball back. So the first one would be a non tagger one. The next one would be getting the ball back to the parent or getting the ball back to whoever's thrown in. What animal do you want to eat? Go hard to get you. Okay, I'm back, 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 back. Good woman. Good woman. Next one this time. Once we throw the ball in, I'll shoot either yellow or orange. And whenever I want to shoot, you've got to touch that pole. You have to touch that pole, the yellow or the orange. Sorry, that's what I'm saying. Come in. Wait, but there's wee orange bits on the top. Don't you worry. That's our yellow. That's our yellow. And there's our orange. So whenever one I shoot, you're going to try and touch the yellow, you're going to touch the orange. Ready? So as I throw the ball, then I'm going to call orange. Okay, you can try and touch it, you can throw it, you can get round him, you can throw it, you can throw it between his legs. Oh, yeah. excellent. Okay. Well done. Um, the last version that basically would be with the parents moving around. So you can throw the ball in and then they're moving about. Just take like a match where they have the scan, it's not a stationary target to hit. Maybe you can say, you know, if, you, if you imagine, we would normally have three jewels working on this. You have quite a wee bit of traffic. That's great straight early on. The kids are getting their head up when they've got a ball. So as you are racing through, obviously you're, you're looking at your solos, you're going to start introducing tapper tagging, hands on the ball. This is a bit of tracking, tapping. Is, uh -huh. it, is, is it kind of like for being like directions to? We've got like directions, you're seeing what direction you're going, because you don't want to, no one ever wants to stay in traffic for too long, so you don't. So you want to stay out of the traffic, and that's what we try and do. Um, within this same wee zone, we will work on different ways. Here, there's a wee bit of a relay. Here we want to go use this chair. So 
Because you stand out facing it. He's giving me two, two others there too. So Chris, what you got there? So chest hustles for Chris, okay? Just there, Nina, chef. That's you. And Lee Hoy, Joanne. Funny how she's in Chris, boy. Funny how she's in Chris, boy. So just a few relay races. So just coming out, you're one, two, three, bounce, one, two, three, bounce, one, two, three, bounce. Oh. the wee three and four year olds, um, our only group of fives, see the more time they're active, the less opportunity they have to rake about. Um, and, and that's it, they're, you know, they're wee rassles at that age of, of two leg wires themselves. They need to be kept on the move as much as possible. So try and alter your stations as best you can to have no cues. And I mean, that's why even there, I didn't have five in a relay race like you would in school. I have two, two's enough because the least you're waiting, there's five seconds before you're, you're back in. So I know going to be tough at times. Times I went through the booklet so much detail, but there's a wee page in the booklet about called Park Lake, and there's another one about <coughs> games bingo. And in the, in the games bingo, the kids are basically asked to create games their own using different equipment. And this would be their opportunity in this station to show whatever we game they made at home because I know myself from school, kids have to, it's even to work hard at home, they can't wait to share a story they've read, they can't wait to share maybe a drawing they've made, a wee piece of artwork they've done. I see if this gets kids practicing and thinking about daily games in, in, at home, then that's a win. And, and parents, the way we've seen anyway, parents are busting to see a wee game they've done with their kids. We get them to video them and put them in the our WhatsApp group. So if I was to, if I was to say to Ethan for proxy, Ethan, go get two balls, okay? And I said, Eva, Eva, I want you to think of a throwing game with two balls. So Eva, we could do a throwing game with two balls. Come, up, come over to me. What throw? We've two balls with two people. What throwing game we're going to do with two balls with two people? You talk to me. What do you think? Uh -huh. Throw it at the same time. Same time. Well, I go high, well, I go low. You go high, you go low. You go high, I go low. Ready? Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Ready? Okay. Can I must take of another game? Can I must take of another game? Two balls, two people. Two balls, two people. Me and Iska do. Any my suggestions? Bounce. Bounce. We'll bounce. We'll bounce each other. Ready? Bounce each other. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Anyone else? Any other ones? More game? A jump. Hand jump. So hand jump. Ready to us. Ready? One, two, three. Here we go. One, two, three. Good one, oh, super. Jar, super. What? Yeah, I'll pay this man. Another one. Maybe we'll leave kicking the next week. <laughs> so, look again. I know, I know it looks pretty simplistic, but these are wee skills that when you're a player, then at under eleven, on your kids' creativity through these wee games, it is unbelievable. And we've had up to maybe nine, ten different wee things from, from the one game. At the minute, I ask kids to do, I ask kids to colour in a wee, a wee page with their badge and that they're on, on, on the wee web page I've done. And Rory Began's given gloves as a present and a Smitty jersey. But, but for July, I'm going to put in a wee challenge of making up games too. So it's a game just to get kids thinking about it. And see, as a parent, see if you've sat all week making that game. You want to be, you want to be at that session. You want to be sitting there wee for that day, you know, near enough. Because you miss out on things in school when they're getting in and maybe you're sitting in front of the class. It's your opportunity to sit and maybe they're looking in your ear. Daddy, what do you want to do next hour? Or mummy, what comes next week's stage? That's sort of goes to play a moment for a parent seeing them deliver. I mean, in essence, they're equal to the culture. 
and Aoife maybe 20 years down the lane could be helping out the wee team too so we're, we're bringing coaches there too through, through these different wee, wee sessions um, that would be my satisfaction for me on, on, a given, on a given week obviously I wouldn't be doing everything I'm doing in every single state station there but I'd be picking one or two of those wee games in every station and having a set out of such in between every two stations we normally do you could do it after every station at each station. My stations can be quite sharp and, and, uh, and active to be honest with you so they're, they're pretty burnt out. They, they don't need to be coming in the middle really to give the coaches a chance to get set up again. After every two stations I would do these different wee activities. So first one I would do I would blow a whistle I would say right kids I'm going to pick one of them and say what animal? What's your favourite animal? They would say for talk's sake a koala and they all have to walk in you like a koala. Even how we're gonna walk there, Paula. Sorry. Even walking in like a koala. We don't know what you want. Normally we'll have giraffes, so the giraffes are walking in like this. It's getting them up in their tippy toes. Sometimes we'll have sloths and they're walking in slowly. Sometimes we'll have snakes and they're on the ground crawl. But it gets all the kids active, it gets them all moving. You're picking out different kids every day. The next one I would do, and because there's different football spread about all the different sections, we would shoot. Right, I want to count to three. Everyone's going to get a ball, bring them into me. One, two, three, go. And they all run. They get a ball and they bring them back to the middle, and then they run back to their station. And at that point, they tell them, this thing you're going to come out and grab a ball, and that's your, that's your, your dinosaur, and that's your dinosaur egg. And you're going to protect your dinosaur egg with your life. And the parents would then be trying to, just getting them used to the game, contact and game time, when, when, when opponents are coming and trying to get the ball. And they sit and they hold the ball, protecting as tight as they can. Again, when they're developing that wee bit more, get your, get your solo in. And you'll be talking about, that's when you really want to see the ball, and get your solo in. And progressing it from there. Other wee ones would have them asking to come in and get the ball, run and score. Get that ball and run and get a score. You can throw it over the net if you want, throw it in the net if they're three and four. Take it off the ground in the net. You shoot up three nets if you're on the four G. That, that's where I, that's where I had them them nets there, basically, Megal, for, for that wee game. Yeah. Because if you've only the one net, it's just a wee bit manic, they're all going there. They get their balls and they run there. Um the next one would be first person that the run so you get them on the first person run and give their parent high five, high high ten. Um and the last one you want the parents would have the footballs and you would say to the kids, the first kid they take a ball off a parent, throw it back, the five different parents would win. So say for toxic use are all spread out around all these stations, the balls, you'd be running, getting a ball of pops on the back. That could be a half pass, it could be a kick pass up around your your level, three stone you know. By that stage you could be saying, look, I want you solo, I want you hand passing off your left hand, I want you kick kicking off your, your sorcery's food. So there's things here that can be incorporated and adapted for, for four different age groups, you know, based on the start coming up. And then the last one would be just pairs running the parents, so we jewels. So we jewels where the parents have the balls like we did before and the parents don't in between the two of them. Whoever wins gives the parent and they move on to another one. Trying to get as much AMB contact in as possible. And then lastly, always like finishing them fun end. Um, I think it's massive. Absolutely massive that you finish off as fun a time as possible. I brought all my wee soft balls with me, but I'm not going to get them out of the place because I love them. I'm not going to get them out because I don't want to have a But our favourite one to do would be the split in the four teams. Um, we would have a, a red team, a green team, a yellow team, and a blue team. And I suppose I have a trainer a week and giving out a, an award or, or a praise or anything. We would pick someone, and their reward is a wee bit like. Remember that show years ago with poor Gonzo, the teacher? Funhouse. Right? Always saying, yeah, what'd you call it? Funhouse. Funhouse or something. I bet, bet they get there. Um, the, the kids get to pour all the softballs over the, over the parent's head. So, whatever kid train well that week or practice well. So, say Aoife, Aoife picked her daddy. He's standing in the middle or he's sitting in the middle and Aoife would get the four, four bags of all different coloured balls. Aoife would pour over his head. And it's, it's, it's we bit like a game rob and this. The kids then run and you ball with different teams and they run, grab the balls, and they're running back and cracks brilliant. There's been parents when they get home sending me pictures of balls down the hoods the next day in their wash machines, we balls everywhere on the we give every team a wee name, so you've normally like the green apples and the green hulks and it's, it's good crack and everyone finishes the parents were active, they were selling 
and, and everyone sort of, a, for that last stage, they make everybody to be as active as possible. The other wee things we do is as many parent and kids races as we can. So we'd have the kids for Toxic on this weight lane, 